and welcome to Phoenix TV. This is a show that brings you Manchester and D-Size fastest and most exciting sports team, the Manchester Phoenix. Well, we've got a bumper programme for you this week, providing we can overcome the technical difficulties we had last week. Well, we've got a double header. Tonight we're playing Peterborough Phantoms. Tomorrow night we've got Hull Pirates. Right, on to tonight. Now, I love games against Peterborough. I always have. I've always called them the kamikaze hockey team of the league over the years. There just doesn't seem any problem. It's everybody go forward and everybody come back and everybody punch in the middle, and it's great to watch. Yeah, they're a, they're a, they're a good side. I mean, Slava's done a, a very good job down in Peterborough, and I think the thing for me is they don't seem to have any real stars. They don't have two or three standout stars. What they have is a very hard-working, fast-skating team who will stick to the game plan and you know they will they will be there or thereabouts at the end of the season and of course they've got last year's top goalie Ozins. I mean yeah. he just looks the part he does but it'd be nice to get in his head early on because he is a he's a, he's a little bit of a snapper on occasions and uh, if things aren't going his way you can perhaps get under his skin a little bit so a couple of early goals for Phoenix and, and you know, we might be in business tonight. Well, we've certainly got the firepower because uh, Stanman and Batman seem to be over oh, 30 points between them so far this season. Yeah, it, it's good to uh, to see that one or two of the walking wounded are on the way back. It might take Stan a, a while to, uh, to get back up to speed, but um, there's no doubting his, his, his quality and his class and once he's firing on all cylinders. You know, scoring goals has not been a problem for us this season. Uh, and, and uh, you know, we've not really conceded that many as well. So anything that can give us just that little bit more class going forward is, is going to be beneficial. Because I should say it's actually Michael Satek and uh, Robin that's racking the points up. And, of course, we mentioned Stanman or uh, something grown. I can't remember what, what uh, Chris Beasley calls him gronometer or something like that but I notice he's out there trying see how things go that would be brilliant if he's back in the lineup tonight yeah I, I think uh, I think we're seeing the benefit of and I don't want to, this to sound the wrong way that Tony is no longer in the lineup and I think Robin Kovar is taking it upon himself to be the quarterback if you like he is, has been absolutely outstanding all season and, and his blossoming partnership with Michael Satek is uh, is absolutely fantastic. Some of the goals they scored recently together are just pure hockey goals. And when he comes off, he needs plugging into the mains for two days. I've noticed that. Uh, he does look very, very tired. He, he is. I mean, criticism has been levelled at him in the past in that he's not uh, too happy at coming back and defending. But he's playing up both ends of the ice this year. He's 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 taking it upon himself to be the leader on the ice, and he, he is doing a fantastic job for us right we'll talk about uh, Sunday game against Hull a bit later on I think uh, I say they're out there doing a bit of a warm up at the moment as you can see behind us but uh, let's give it a bit of time and then let's go watch some hockey it is the Phoenix who win the opening draw Russell will play down the boards towards Alton and Gibson ties his man up trying to kick the puck through is Alton and Russell comes in to dig it out Banks up the boards by Norton. Russell reaches in again. The Phoenix will reel it in with Satek, who goes across the zone to Luke Boudreau, and he will drop down behind the Phoenix goal. Dumped in by the Phantoms. They played out near side. Can leave us force it home. Not quite backtracking. Was grown shot comes in from Barrick. It's a good stop by phone. Slapped around the boards by Archer. It'll come through towards O'Flaherty, who can't quite bank it clear. Take nice pass, sets up Kovar, who dances his way in, drops it off. Alton and shot them as a stick in the way to take all the pace of it. Bounces down in front, Satter trying to scoop it home. It'll break across towards Alton, but the whistle has gone from Chris Well. Right hand side feeds Levers, who tries to dance his way through. Good stop by Phone out at the top of the crease. Wood forced him wide, and Phone makes feed down the left hand side. Ben Wood lines him up, firing it towards the front of the net. Tip comes in, and it's off the post and in. 
Nicely worked two-man break by the Phantoms, and it's James Ferrara who's just got ahead of James Neal. Tips it off the post behind Stevie Phone, and the Phantoms take the lead. It's Phoenix nil, Peterborough one. The Phoenix do keep it alive as Satek knocks it down low. Robson knocked down to the ice. Satek setting up behind the goal, sneaking in was Neal, and it's through the crease and out the other side. Kovar gets onto the puck in the corner. In the slot, he's... Satek and he's forced it home. All sorts of traffic in front of Yanis Orzic, who did not see that one at all. Nico Altenham with the screen. It's Michael Satek with the goal, and it's Phoenix 1, Phantoms 1. On his backhand, gets the hash mark, then turns forehand, tries to throw it in front. Peterborough block and get in the way. And there's a foot race there. Gibson driving his way in, makes a little move. Good stop by Phone. He tried to go forehand side, but Phone gets the right pad down. Sharp angle effort is off the blocker of Phone. It bounces down, almost off the top of the head of Luke Boothroyd. Phoenix get in there and it's Gron who knocks it loose, holding, curling at the top of the circle and playing it down low. Chance in front for Weldon who tips it wide near side. Ben Wood gets the hit in and plays the puck up the boards. Robson's kept it alive, scoops it across the zone and down into the corner. Weldon backhands around the board. Scott trying to work it out front and he scores. The Phoenix absolutely all at sea at the back there and Craig Scott manages to force it on the backhand past the still pad of Stephen Phone. It's Phoenix one, Phantoms two. Bit of open ice drives his way in, Put, got caught in his skate zone, it's knocked away, he'll have to chase back hard into the zone as Piskowskis is tracking in, it'll be Gibson to pick it up behind the net, plays back towards Padalek who scores. Again the Phoenix not picking their men up at the back and it's a backhander from Alice Padalek that surprised Stephen Foe, gone right through his legs and into the net, it's two quick fire goals to the Phantoms and it's Phoenix one, Peterborough three. Backhanded ahead towards Weldon, who nicely tips it in. Weldon will go towards the back post as Craig Scott walks in. Weldon scores. Craig Scott holding, holding. Nice backdoor pass, and it's Will Weldon who applies the finish. And unfortunately, it's going from bad to worse in the second period for the Manchester Phoenix. It's Phoenix 1, Peterborough 4. Deku comes away with the puck, drives his way around the net. Moves out as far as the blue line and throws it through traffic. It's wide of the mark. Alton scrapping away. Kovar's there as well. Satek near side. Good stop. Rebound chance and they score. Michael Satek it is. Nicely worked around the zone and Satek gets his own rebound. There's that response from the Manchester Phoenix. It's Phoenix 2, Peterborough 4. Pass is reeled in by Padalek. Who backhands across the ice. Pliskowskis reels it in. Not offside, say the officials. I'm not entirely convinced. Pliskowskis forced into the boards by Boothroyd. But managed to keep possession. He's got Craig Scott waiting in front, he said it comes out, Robert Ferrara shoots, that was an awkward one for Phone, it was high and almost heading for his ear, but he managed to save, save with his shoulder and hold on. D to James Neal, down the left-hand side he will come, crosses the blue, stops nicely, flips it through, it's Gron into the zone, he's got Archer with him, Gron keeping, trying to go sharp angle, that was an awkward one for Yanis Orsens, but it flies wide, and Baronet can just flip this one away for Peterborough, all the way down to Stephen Phone, who backhands up the board for Gron. Satek stepping inside Padalek has to be a penalty and will indeed be a penalty. Tripping call on Alesh Padalek. That one, two minutes every day of the week. Gron gives to Kovar and drops down onto the goal line. Gron, one time, a good stop by Orzins. The rebound's loose and Orzins gets the glove down. All sorts of skirmishing going on in front of the net as James Archer went digging for that loose puck. But Yanis Orzins managed to get that big glove on it. And James Ferrara coming in to clear the front of the net. Nice with Gron, he's got Boothroyd with him, drops it back, big shot from Boothroyd, save is made by Orzins, that puck did come loose. The Phoenix were more than entitled to go for that as it came back off the pad of Orzins and the Phantoms will all come in and grab hold of a man in front again. And Robson can play it ahead, Levers nicely tipping it through, two on one for the Phantoms, Piskowskis down the right hand side as Gibson with him, plays it across, Gibson shoots and scores. All that Phoenix pressure, and it's the Phantoms who break down the ice. This time Pliskos has got the pass away nice and early. And Lloyd Gibson may well have sealed the deal for Peterborough. It's Phoenix 2, Phantoms 5. Again by McGiffin. The Phantoms will bring it down the ice for one last attack as Bebris down the left-hand side. Just holds in the corner, trying to play towards the front of the net. Ben Wood can sweep it away. Puck will break loose. That will do it. And in the end, it was a ropey second period from which the Manchester Phoenix just could not recover against a quality outfit like the Peterborough Phantoms. The opening home game of the weekend is a defeat for the Phoenix. The final score is Manchester Phoenix 2, Peterborough Phantoms 5. Disappointing 5-2 loss to Peterborough Phantoms, but all credit to them. 
coming to our barn and they played very, very well. And we had with, uh, I don't know if we can call him an old friend because he, he played for the dark side o- over with Sheffield Steel Dogs last season and has moved now to, to Peterborough. I'm here with Lloyd Gibson. Hi, Lloyd. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, moved down here. Was it was it a surprise move or are you ready for a move? Um, just just ready for a move, ready for a bit of a change. And um, when Slava phoned me up in the summer, I just couldn't refuse really. So that's how it worked out. Well, you look like you've slotted in well to, to a good side. I mean, very impressed with the, is it, the Scott. The very good, yeah. Really good, very good signing. A uh, bit of a surprise, no one have, has ever heard of him. Obviously, heard of his dad in Milton Keynes, but he's great. And to be fair to everybody else, fantastic sort of team atmosphere in there and everybody works for each other. No superstars. There's a few people talking about, uh, talking about him last year. I think he ended up going to Nottingham and... Uh, they sort of didn't keep him for very long, did they? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm no idea. Well, that's, that's basically, yeah, they, they got him for the, champ- uh, the Champions League and then uh, he was left without a club because everybody else had uh, just all up. Barry, we all know about Barry, and Ozens is just he's just a big unit to get the puck past. He's brilliant, absolute best goal in the league by a good distance, but uh, he keeps us in games and gives us a chance to win every night, which is why I moved here. We get a chance to win every night. Keep it tight at the back. We've got guys who will... I think every line scored one or two goals tonight. We've got production off every line, so it's going really well. So you never thought about coming to Manchester then? <laughs> Tony can give me a call if he wants, but actually I'm happy in Peterborough at the minute, so... Uh, I'll talk to you next summer. Yeah, well done. Your team, you made a great start to the season, uh, moving on from the playoff win from from last year. Certainly look, look like a, a club going, going places at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's really exciting. Like I said before, uh, there's no superstars in the team. Everybody does the job, everybody works hard, and I think everybody's scoring goals, so we can't really complain at it. We're going to uh, try and push for the title, hopefully, so we're going as hard as we can. Well, congratulations. Safe Johnny back, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you very much. Nico is unbelievable defensively. You can tell he's, he's played in really good leagues in that, in, in that role, so he doesn't make any mistakes in that, in that way, but we, we've, got, we've got a good, good set of imports that actually played both ends of the ice this year. And I think that's, that's why when we played Milton Keynes at home and we've beaten Guildford at home, it's because it's not just the British guys that are working hard. It is the, it is the, D, the, the imports, I mean. Yeah, well, I mean, Nico is one of these players. He doesn't stand out, set the lights going, but if it's a, a player that needs sorting out or a body is needed, all of a sudden it's him that's there. He just seems to, to be there. His positional sense and the way he works things is great to watch. Yeah, it's like you see him in training and... And stuff like that. He, he's he's just really got like a, a wicked hockey brain on him. He's not like as quick as Robin and Michael, and he's not as like explosive in that way. But it's just if you see, like, I've not seen him make a turnover in however many games we played. And for me, like I like seeing that. That's the, that's what I'm trying to learn from. So he's he's a really good player to watch. And like even when he shoots, he shoots. Even if he knows he's not going to score from that bad angle, he, he knows where to put it off of a goalie to get the rebound to bounce out in the right position. But I think like another guy like that is Neely at the moment. He's been on fire for us. He's been, I think he's been our best British player by an absolute mile for the past six, seven games. Like Since the season started, he's been unreal for us. It looks like uh, coach has asked him to step up, the pl- step up into play a little bit down, d- down the wing and uh, he's getting to the back post. And I mean, he's, he's, his two goals were were outstanding goals. The two that he has scored so far. I think there's a few more in the in the locker room there for him. Yeah, well, he, I think Neely feels like he can score every game at the moment. When he, especially he's getting a lot of time on the power play. But he's he's just really smart. He just just everything he does is 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 the right thing. So I like I like watching Neely play as well. He's he's a really good player for me. But this year he's he's, he's kind of taken that more offensive role because we've got Tomo, we've got Baz, we've got we've got. Um, Ben Wood and Ben Russell, they're all defensive demons. So I think Neely's really stepped up into that that, that part of his game. And he, I, I, really, I really rate Neely. I think he's one of the most underrated players in the league. Oh, well, he's, he's always been a fan favourite as well. Well, OK, it's a case of move on tomorrow. We've got Hull. Got to be looking to pick the two points up. I mean, you guys already have said that in there anyway. You know, let's, let's come out the weekend with two and uh, move on from there. So... We can get some rest, we can get some TV, get some rest, and we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, time, mate. Puck is dropped, we're underway in the first period. Boothroyd plays across to Ben Russell. Tip ahead by Gronis off the back of the leg of Tommy Lane, and Thurston comes jump down into the zone. 
Russell looks to hold off Warren Tate, flips the puck away, but Thurston sends sweeps towards the front. It's off the shin of Gron, who will pick it up and skate it away. Tries to bank it off the board. It'll come back to Ben Russell. As in, can't knock it past Ben Russell. He slashed his stick right out of his hands, but looking seen by the referee. Kirk towards the net. Save is made by Foam, and there is no rebound. Cameron Brownlee went looking for it, and the Phoenix are quick to clear him out of the way. It's, it's Kovar who wins the draw. Russell backhands around the back of the Phoenix net. Boothroyd finds Satek. Slings a lovely cross ice pass, driving in his Kovar. Big shot save made by John Baston. It, but it deflects wide. Stubbly turned into the boards. Puck's been turned over by the Phoenix. Hopeful try and kick it nicely to his stick, which he does, and flings it back to Neil from the point. Shoots and scores. James Neil lets the shot go from the point. There may have been a deflection on that on the way through, but it's found its way past John Baston and the Phoenix lead by a goal to nil. Oh, great for Altonen, who gets it back to Russell. Puck bobbles, he was trying to get it clear, and the Pirates can bring this one away. Josh Gent will drive his way into the zone. Tries a little toe drag inside, he's knocked down by Boothroyd. Great stop, Stephen Foam. Sam Towner puts his hand on the back of his head because he cannot believe that Steve Foam, who was down on his front, has got his glove up and absolutely robbed Sam Towner. Tommy Lane can skate onto it. Brings it away, down the left-hand side for Hull. He's nicely lined up by Ben Russell. He wasn't quite as good a hip check as Osmond's, but it wasn't bad. Booth has definitely taught him that one. Satek, lovely delay and finds Kovar. He'll drive into the zone, snaps a shot. It's well blocked by James Hutchinson, and that allows Baston to get the stick out and cover it up. Good work from James Hutchinson. Thank you. I shall do so. The second period is underway. Ben Russell going from meander around the Phoenix. Uh, Boothroyd finds Grodd, who tries to drop it back to Boothroyd. Warren Tate causing a mischief, but the Phoenix will tidy it up. And Boothroyd sweeps it back across the zone to Russell. Boothroyd, nice pass. Grodd looking to tip it ahead. It's been turned over. Big shot from Tate. Pad save by phone. Rebound comes out to Tommy Lane, who scores. It's all very casual at the back from the Manchester Phoenix, and the big shot from Tate was padded out, but Tommy Lane fires the rebound in, and with 29 seconds gone in the second period, it's Phoenix 1, Pirates 1. Alive. Plays it around the back of the net to Alton. He's got a flatty part in front, but somehow he gets it again on the goal line. Alton setting up shot behind the goal and moves out to the hash mark, drops down low towards Kovar, will pick it up off the boards behind the net, sweeping it out front, where is it? It's under the pad of John Baston. And he manages to dig it out and stop it going across the line. Intercept, he'll just hold, passes his way past Tommy Lane, down the right-hand side he comes, floats one through, it'll bounce towards Alton and good stop by Baston. They've got a cross and denies Nico Alton with the pad. Down the right-hand side comes Warren Tate, Boothroyd lines his man up. There's going to be a penalty called here, and I think it might be on the Manchester Phoenix. As the puck is touched, it is indeed. It's a high-sticking call. It might actually be on Warren Tate, I think. I think it is, and I think what Dan Boardman's saying here is that as Tate tried to go past Boothroyd, in the act of pushing him out of the way, his stick has come up and knocked the Phoenix player's helmet back. Boothroyd in front of the whole bench. Play a nice pass across to Gron, who's got a little bit of open ice. He finds James Archer, who drives his way into the zone. Alton lets it run. Kovar, winding, shooting, stop made by Baston. There was traffic in front, but he sees it all the way. Spun ahead by Towner. Ben Wood does well to get it away. Mielli picks it up. Not offside of the Pirates. Mielli cuts inside, shoots, pad save by phone. Rebound comes out, and it's put wide. Phone's all at sea, and it's Ben Wood who manages to get back on the post to block the chance. Phone's still down from the ice. The Phoenix have eventually got the puck. The pass ahead has been deflected. Archer will race in after it. John Baston clears that one into the penalty box. Boothroyd flips it off the net. It'll bounce down to Satek. Lovely scoop through to Alton. And now Kovar finding Satek again. He will carry his way around the net towards Alton. At the back door. He beaten Baston but couldn't get it inside the post. The Pirates will pick it up and bring it away as Thurston's pass was just behind Tommy Lane. Boothroyd. Can the Phoenix use this? Yes, they can. Kovar's got half a step in behind the DJ. Touching hustles back. Kovar rings it off the post. Went glove side on John Baston and beat him clean, but rings it off the outside of the pipe. Top of the circle. Walking in winds. Shoots. Save is made by Baston and he drops down. And now there's a bit of a scrum in front as Archer went looking. Osman giving him the face wash. Kovar's in there. Gron's in there as well. Baston's got up and out of the way. Dominic Osman, I think, will have a word with the referee. Osman now with a follow-up push on James Archer. Mm. 
I think we're going to get matching penalties here by the looks of Pirates will set up and bring it away from behind their own net with Jonathan Kirk. Skates it ahead, crosses the blue, crosses the red, stick handles his way into the zone, shoots, Foam makes the same rebound, came back to Kirk, was off the side of the net, Kirk's been shot down to the ice by Ben Wood, but no penalty called, Kovar scoops a high backhander down the ice, that's right onto the tape, Satek shoots, good stop by Baston, Satek just didn't have enough room to pull a move and he could only shoot it into the netminder, Boothroyd off the backboards to Russell, he's got Satek making another break, if he can find him, he can, it's a two-on-one into the zone for the Phoenix, Satek keeping across, it had to have some height on it and Kovar couldn't bat it home, the Pirates played up the boards but Nico Altman keeps it alive, Kovar spins away from Tom Stubbley, Hutchinson comes in, puck bobbles out towards the front of the net, Kovar gets onto it, behind the goal, drives out front of his backhand, Phoenix trying to force it home, Baston with his pad down and dives on top of it, that was almost a really scruffy one but they almost forced it home looking to complete their line changes. Russell plays it ahead. O'Flaherty knocks it down, takes a whack from Lee Bonner, but the Phoenix will gain the zone with Trent Hope. Down the right-hand side, throws it towards the net, and Baston will glove that one down and hold for a whistle. Jed gets it caught in his skates, but does get it ahead to Mielli into the zone. He's nicely lined up by Michael Satek. That's the only time we're going to see Michael Satek knock somebody on his backside. The pass across the ice, knocked back by Satek. Nico Alton walks in, and it's straight into the glove of Baston. Floats one towards the net, it comes in, Altman trying to bank it in, can Kovar bundle it home? Not quite good defensive work from Cameron Brownlee, as Baston wasn't sure where the puck was. Kovar will circle out there, nicely drops it back. Satek shooting, deflection on it, bounces down behind the net. Kovar comes in, Ralph does well to shield the puck and clears it away. Kovar comes in to win the puck, trying to hold off Mario Mielli. Backhands up the boards to Satek, who gives it back to Kovar. Thrown towards the net, that one's hit John Baston square on the head. Kovar, who's got Boothroyd on the point, he said Kovar keeps, works his way around the zone, shoots, pad saved by Baston, rebounds there for Altonen, and again it's Bob Baston with the pad and then the glove to scoop it out of the air. Kovar went for the shot straight off the draw, but the buzzer will sound, and the whole Pirates have a point. 60 minutes gone, the Phoenix faithful look uh, somewhat um, subdued at this point, but the whole Pirates and John Baston have secured themselves a point. Off to overtime we go. Phoenix have won the face off, Satek will drive his way into the zone, he'll carry it around the back of the net on his backhand, curls his way out front, snaps a shot, it's been blocked by Bonner, it'll come outside the line, so Satek will have to curl back, Boothroyd says go left, so Satek does and he'll drive his way past Craig Thurston, Bonner drops down to one knee, Satek sets up Archer who blasts it near side, it'll bounce down onto the back of the net, Boothroyd's nicely pinched in, floats it towards Archer in front and Baston will cover it up for a whistle, the Pirates are doing a good job of keeping feet to the outside for the time being, Gron's gone towards the net, can O'Flaherty to find him? No, instead he plays it round the boards, Gron will pick it up, drops it nicely off for James Neal. Neal gets it across one timer from Gron and it's another good stop by Baston. It'll be Thurston and Kovar to take the face off. Kovar wins it. Neal from the blue line carries it down low. He'll try and work the angle. James Neal sharp angle is straight into the glove of Baston again. Neal had Baston down there. It almost would be better to try and go across the front of the net backhanded in but instead tried to go near side. James Neal will bring the puck away for the Phoenix, it's forced back by Warren Tate. Neil trying to play it, it's been intercepted by Tate, who tries to stuff it in near side, Foe making the stop. Tate will look to curl his way out front and scores! Warren Tate puts it up over the glove of Stephen Foam, and the whole Pirates have their first win in team history. It's a turnover by James Neal, the Pirates worked it out front, and Warren Tate, the whole captain, finishes it in overtime. D-side is absolutely stunned. It's finished, Manchester Phoenix one, Hull Pirates two. Right, Phoenix TV here. Uh, blank weekend for us, uh, losing last night and then again tonight to the Hull Pirates. I keep still wanting to call them the Stingrays, but the Pirates are uh, winning it in overtime. I'm here with their man of the match, uh, John Basson, the netminder. John. Must be great to pick up your first win of the season. Uh, definitely is. It it's, um, gives the team energy that we've been kind of lack or not lacking, missing after uh, going down quite a few games and being so close. But um, we got a huge win after that that match. It was tight, but 
proud of the guys after the effort they put in. So it definitely feels amazing to uh, crack that. It was a great defensive uh, performance in the third period especially, but uh, you were still dangerous on the attack. Yeah, we um, we did get pushed into our zone a few times, but we, we kept our cool in our zone. We uh, we played the system and uh, defense helped me out by pushing it, pushing the Phoenix out to the the blue line and such, so th so that I was able to see those pucks and make those saves. But um, it's just somehow sometimes uh, games go like that. You have to be in our de defensive zone more than the offensive zone. Just gotta grind for those wins. Well, you certainly saw a lot of rubber there, and uh, I would to say yeah, to say you you annoyed us greatly, <laughs> which uh, there you're there doing your job. So well done. It's a good win for them. It's been a long time coming. Maybe y your team can move on from that, as you said. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's. It's always easier to get those wins after the first win. It's the first win is always the hardest of the season, and uh, we just haven't had that lucky break. And we finally got got our moment. And um, I have a feeling we'll have many more wins to come during the season now. I hope there's no more against us, but that's uh, just a little bit of uh, bias here. Thanks very much, mate, and uh, all the best. Yeah, thank you, and good luck with the season, guys. Thank you. And I'm here with uh, our man of the match, Stevie Phone. Steve, we did everything. We hit them and everything but the kitchen sink, and couldn't get it in tonight. Yeah, I know they um they played well, their goalie played well. Um they def defended well as a unit as well, really. Um you know, we kept coming at them in waves, but they were they were defending really well, keeping us to the outsides and um and really, I mean, they 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 just kept us from from having too many real quality scoring chances, you know, like there were never really any backdoor tap-ins that we were going to get cuz they defended really well and on top of that as as we said, their their goalie played well as well. Because from your point your point of view as a net miner, that's exactly what you want your defence to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's its one of them where if they can box out and keep the shots to the outside and, you know, you can take them all day. So, um, and then as long as they clear any rebounds and that's thats the best way a defence can play for a goalie, really. So. Yes, uh, uh, it's difficult. We can't fault Henry. It's one of these days that just wouldn't go in. Uh, good performance by yourself. I've got to mention that... Uh, Little save with a hand coming up. I mean, there was nobody in the rink believed you could believe you'd have got that one. Yeah, well, I, as he was coming in, the guy made a move and I caught an edge or something, so I fell over. So I was, uh, some people might have seen the panic in my eyes as I was falling over, so I just spun around and uh, tried getting as much of my body over the other side as I could and then fortunately shot it where uh, where I was just putting my glove. So. Well, somebody said you had the biggest grin anybody's seen in the in the ring when when you saw that it was in your glove. Yeah, I was pretty relieved, as I say, because it's uh, it's a bit embarrassing falling over at best of times. But never mind when they're just about to score. So uh, was that you know get a jail free card that one then was it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I was going to say where do we go from here, but you get back to work in midweek and concentrate on Guildford. Yeah, definitely. You know, we've got a bit of work to do. We need to get ourselves out of this little rut that we've found ourselves in. But, uh, you know, we've got a hard-working bunch, so we'll put the graft in during the week and uh, we'll come out fighting on the weekend and uh, hopefully turn things around. Yeah, we've got a good side. It's uh, just put us a little blip on the radar, really. Let's move on and good luck next week and I'll see you there. Thanks. Thanks. Right, that's it for Phoenix TV this weekend. Very disappointing, a, a no-point weekend for us. But we'll bounce back and we've got Guildford away next Saturday followed by the Swindon Wildcats at home next Sunday with the usual 6.30 face-off. You can follow the club on Twitter, on Facebook, in the media, on our website, and of course on Phoenix TV. So, see you next week. <laughs>